I'm Susan Mulholland, and welcome to Art Geek. Tonight, we're going to be visiting Anita Gronendahl at her barn studio in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the barn studio gallery. We're having our spring exhibit right now, and uh, I have my work on display, and I have three other artists with me, uh, Jean Franz Miller, Dorothy McNamara, and Carol Barini. Uh, the uh, barn studio, um, the idea to have the studio open came from some old friends of my parents, the Meltzers, who were wonderful oil painters over in Abington. And I remember hearing that every year at Christmas they opened their home and exhibited their work. So when we moved up here and we had this wonderful area 15 years ago, we thought at Christmas we would invite one artist to show with me and we only used the lower level. And that was uh, Vincent Seglia. And that went well, so I added a second show in the spring. And now I'm doing four shows a year. But it's, it's so nice here. People seem to feel a little different than going to a gallery. It's a little more personal. They're almost coming to my home. And it's very good exhibit space and lighting. Uh, the artists that display here seem to appreciate that. Uh, they're, you can get back from their work. A lot of galleries are cramped. Here you can get back and see the true colors. Um, of course, it's very nice for me to be able to work in my studio. The rest of the year, I have my work hanging by appointment, and it's certainly very convenient. I also do go out and show in other galleries and in exhibits, but this is my prime exhibit spot. Uh, since you were last here, Susan, I've made several more uh, additions of my silk screens. And uh, some of the larger ones, uh, one of them is the gaggle of geese. I had a lot of fun with that. The inspiration was my, my daughter's uh, weeder geese, Chinese weeder geese. She had them in a pen on a bright, sunny day, and all the shadows coming across, I thought, were very graphic. So I set myself a, a problem to do it in as few colors as possible with the most bold effect. And I managed to do nine colors, which are few for me. Um, so that, that was kind of fun. And, and the lead goose, I tried to get a great deal of personality into. The other new one, my very latest, is uh, hydrangeas. And in that one, I didn't limit myself in any way. I did 17 colors. It was um, inspired by a, an arrangement I had made of my own hydrangeas and dried three different kinds. So I have a pale pink, pale blue, and a creamy color. So my overall effect was for something very soft and subtle. And I'm going to feature that um, in the garden show that I'll have in June. It will be on a postcard and, and uh, featured in the show prominently. Now, the, the garden show is uh, in its third annual year. Uh, I invite 17 or 18 artists to bring work relating in any way to the garden. And we also open up our garden for self-guided tours. So it, it's very nice together. Uh, the first year, we were very overwhelmed. Uh, we had about 3,000 people come in one weekend. We were not prepared for that. Uh, we had a similar response the second year, so this year we're having the show a little longer. We're having it for two weekends. And that helps us if the weather is bad the first weekend, too. So it's, it's really, I'm delighted that people have seemed to enjoy the theme. Gardening is so much uh, more interesting to people now, so many more people doing it. And um, it's the only group show that I've had. I usually have two or three artists like this one. And I will be having another group show in the fall on the landscape, which will be a first. Carol Barani and I are dressed in saris because we just got back from India, and we couldn't resist buying one. And. Uh, we thought an art opening would be the only time we could wear one in Bucks County. <laughs> well, when I came home, I did two big oils from memory, although I had taken lots and lots of pictures. 
I take lots of photographs and then I work from them later on. But when I do take a photograph, I compose it just like I'm going to paint. I make sure all the negative spaces are perfect. I make sure there's a high contrast area in the center and a lot of middle tones. So I practically mentally painted the picture as I'm looking into the photograph. Evening Meal is a painting done strictly from memory, a very brief memory. Uh, as we drove from the, uh, in the bus from the airport in Jaipur to our hotel, um, we saw lots and lots of homeless people, some of whom had tent arrangements or just a piece of burlap. Uh, but inside them, you could see them having dinner. <coughs> with maybe a stolen light bulb or a candle. And they seem to be close, very close family groupings. And this struck me that all homeless people don't have to be miserable. They can be, have just as much a family feeling and a good dinner as other people. And it was, it was interesting to, to see how, how having no money and and no and nothing, nothing, except maybe a pot and a pan. Uh, they could have a nice dinner in the evening, just like everyone else. I work in both watercolor and oil. I grew up painting watercolors, and then when I was old enough, at about twelve or thirteen, I got a set of oil paints, and then from there it was either or, whatever mood hit me, and it, it descends, and you just work in it, and, and wild horses can't stop you from working in it. So um, I've, I've become more or less a landscape artist, but I don't do long-range landscapes anymore with, with far vistas. I've zeroed in on intimate backyard, front yard scenes, and little human pieces of life. And I find that they're very popular, and I noticed that the French Impressionists zeroed in on the same thing because it, it is a human element to them. Whereas a regular landscape may not have the human element in it. My routine is to work every day. And I usually start in about 9.30 or 10, and I work until I get hungry, which I might never get hungry. And then I, I work again in the afternoon or frame or do something. I'm doing something in the studio. And even when I'm not <clears throat> in the mood to paint, I, I go in the studio anyway and frame and diddle around until I do get in the mood, and then I do get some work done. But generally speaking, I work every day. It's not a hobby, it's a, a business and a pleasure and a compulsion. A great accomplishment for me is winning an award, but also having somebody I like and who is, who is uh, knowledgeable by one of my paintings. Dorothy Redfield bought two of my paintings, and I, that's one of my and pluses. Uh, when I painted Dogwood Glory, the dogwoods were in full glorious bloom. So I went outside, set up my easel, and watched the dogwoods flow in the wind, and I painted. And everybody says the painting has lots of energy and movement. Well, it might because an ant ran up my leg every five seconds, and I had to kill it. And another five seconds. I had to kill it again, so I got madder and madder and wondering what I'm standing on. And I just got more and more furious, so the painting got more and more <laughs> vigorous. And so everybody comments on it now, which I think is very funny. <laughs> I was standing on an anthill. I paint in both watercolor and oil. I always have. Um, I've grown in both right from the beginning. Uh, one I was really bad in one I was bad in the other and uh, and they've come along 
you can see the maturity, I think, now in them. And um, I enjoy both. I taught in both media. Also acrylics. Sometimes I do acrylics. And they've all been fun. Well, when I begin, um, begin any of my paintings, I have to feel the mood that I'm intending to portray in the, in the piece. And, um, and I may do photographs, sketches on location. After the painting has started, I may take, no matter how large it is, may take it back to location, work on it there, even if it's in the middle of a street. And um, uh, I work primarily for composition. A good composition is very, very important. And that's always in my mind, and the mood. And I try to get a beautiful light, something that I enjoy looking at, and I hope everyone else will. So it is the light and the composition that I work for. I was trained, I was taught by many artists in Bucks County, Philadelphia County, um, even artists in New York, where I didn't go to a formal art school. I sought out teachers that I admired and followed through. Um, some were exclusively for portrait painting, some were for general, and that's how I got it. And I'm still taking workshops here and there, now and then. Oh, I think uh, the artist was, who was most important to my work would have been uh, Nelson Shanks, portrait painter, and a very good one. Well, some of the things that were very special to me uh, were the awards, of course, awards that were won for the paintings and where they were hung. Um, been hung in, in Philadelphia Museum of Art and, uh, and important shows in this area in Philadelphia. And another thing that was important to me was, um, was teaching. I did teach for nine years and um, that was a special learning process in itself, <laughs> the teaching. And taking out students on workshops. We went to Cape May and Cape Cod, and uh, that was exciting. I think that's something we'll always remember. The painting, Stover, Meyer, and Knight, was painted many times in many ways, front, back, sides, and um, it was always popular, and I always enjoyed it. And this last time, Stover, Meyer, and Knight, I decided I wanted to do a night scene. Well, there was not a chance of sitting out on that road, uh, Dark Hollow Road, and painting that. So I used photographs of daytime in midsummer and translated it into my feeling of winter, of how it would look and feel in winter. And I think it has captured that cold, icy feeling in midwinter. So uh, that was a chore because it is all in your imagination. Well, it looks like a very realistic painting. Very few people would know that uh, what's all behind it. Yellow ribbon. Yellow ribbon was a fun watercolor. It was one that went well. It was partially planned, as I do. I do care about the composition. Uh, but then I kept adding pieces. I uh, set up um, the flowers in the basket, and then, OK, that's lovely. but. Let us hang a little something. So then there would be a ribbon, and then the ribbon wasn't quite right. Uh, so then there'd be a flower tied to the ribbon, and it kind of grew as it went along. And uh, everything that happened to it helped it. So uh, that was a, it was a lucky, happy painting, I think. And that has won two award, two major awards: Philadelphia Watercolor and uh, the award at the James Mishner Center. Oh, my training. Mm. That was a really wonderful experience because it began very young as a child. I wasn't aware of it. Um, the intent was there. The desire was there. The predisposition was there. So it was something I had worked at through my years in school and high school. And then um, I went on to other things and uh, a bit of education in different fields in marriage and children and couldn't really be educated in the sense of, of a formal uh, education, so I uh, pursued an independent study course. And through a lot of viewing and insight um, and a bit of research, I would see people's work that I admired very much. And then I would find out if they were teaching courses or workshops. And that's what I would do, would be to take a uh, workshop with these people, to study with them for intervals of time, and incorporate that, what they would uh, be giving me, into my own personal 
style and it evolved with a lot of work through the years and uh, finally you become professional and you are very happy but you don't stop working because you're still not where you want to be so you do uh, keep going on with what you want to do and you still keep incorporating it's it's an evolving process all of the time well the teachers that were most influential in my life and the most generous with their knowledge is how I see it. Um, and they're far and few between, actually, uh, was Howard Watson from Philadelphia, whom I studied with for a few years. He was a most generous man, and I found that he not only communicated through his art, but through his uh, language in a manner which we as students could understand, absorb, and appreciate, and I found that invaluable. Um, he gave us inspiration. Uh, he gave us feedback. He put a bit of humor into it. He was excellent. Uh, there was William Ziegler, again, whom we painted with a great deal outside. Um, there was um, Robert Saxon from Trenton, New Jersey, uh, who gave us another dimension, uh, a very loose kind of free feel each, um, each uh, teacher that we worked with had something to offer. We didn't always know what it was we were going to be taking away with us, but uh, I had an opportunity, for example, to study a weekend workshop with Don, Don Kingman up at Shippensburg University. And um, a delightful man, I found that his incorporation of his sense of humor into his work was was a fascinating dimension again that I wasn't aware of. It, it made light. It helped to, uh, to lighten my study program and to enjoy it a lot more. So we walk away with perhaps a word or two or even a sentence uh, from each of these teachers and um, we value them and we are thankful that we've had them in our lives because that's the end result that we see today. I work always in watercolor. Uh, perhaps I will do a pen and ink or something of that sort which will go along with watercolor, but I am a watercolor person because that is my personality. Uh, spontaneous and quick, and it has to be thought out before it hits the paper. Um, there isn't an awful lot of room for error. Um, judgment is uh, on call at all times, and it's my medium. I am very comfortable and happy with it, and it's the hardest one to work in. It really is. Watercolor um, is the type of medium that you approach. I have always said that you can address an oil, but you must approach a watercolor. So I will come to that in many ways. I will do a lot of photographing uh, for recording. I will do sketches. I will work on site or I will work in the studio. Uh, and through my travels, I will be working on what I call my internal computer. I will be recording in my brain. I will be mixing colors. So when it comes time to actually work on the subject matter, um, it will be changed, it will be abstracted, it will be condensed, it will be uh, compositioned, and it will be placed on the paper, which I have stretched, soaked and stretched, and put onto a piece of Homa soap, stapled it down, let it dry. I will do a pencil drawing. And then I will take a few moments actually to get calm before I um, approach this task at hand because I find that those moments before I touch the paper with pigment are the most exciting. Um, I'm a purist. I don't believe in cutting the paper. I don't believe in doing a lot of gimmicky things. I like things to be pure and natural. Um, and then I will start what I call molding, just as a person would take a lump of clay and mold it with his or her fingers, I will be molding with color, intensity, and values, and I will begin to shape what it is, is the subject matter. And then, uh, hopefully, we have happy accidents, and we also have other accidents, but with a bit of problem solving and some good thinking, we have a successful watercolor at the end. This painting that you're looking at now, I have just entitled Colorado Inspiration. It's an abstracted countryside of the Colorado, which is known as the Little Switzerland of Colorado. It's in the southern portion outside Durango, and I was fortunate enough to take a trip out there and to absorb the countryside. I love to do this. 
Um, I may paint on the site at times, but sometimes it's so overwhelming or the elements don't allow it. So we know that we're going to come home and work on it. Um, this one in particular was one that started out very well, and it had a bit of problem solving in it. Where there were areas that were abstracted and were very soft, there were also areas that I wanted to depict as solidity in this terrain, and I had to work on that. So what I did was my typical turning it to the wall procedure for a few days or a few weeks or a few months, and then turning it around and looking at it. And by doing that, uh, I was able to zero in on certain areas uh, that needed the work. So this perhaps took me a bit more time than I would have normally had a landscape go. Some just flow. This one did not because of its uh, involvement. But I was pleased with it at the end, and I liked people's responses, and I felt that I had an abstraction of this landscape that I was pleased with, and that's why I call it my Colorado inspiration. Grapes number one. Um, I have a series that I go back and work on. One is the grapes and one is peonies and primarily because seasons come and go and it brings different crops. And My mother has a, uh, I can't say a vineyard, but she's got this grape arbor that some seasons are different and the grapes have a different color and hue because of the uh, the temperatures. So I try each year to do a, either a grape or a peony and this is a grape painting that I've done that I'm very pleased with but I had done one earlier which I liked very much and I was very much into that painting so it was difficult to come out and do another one to be pleased with. Um, I had started this and worked on it and I really lost my um, excitement about it for a while. And I turned this one to the wall and took it out a while later and looked at it and I thought, gee, I really like some of the things in this painting. I'm really excited about it. I got back my inspiration and my excitement and in the meantime I had taken some uh, photographs, which I often do, uh, to give me information to record what it is that I need to look at. And I finished this painting. And I backed away from it and I thought, wow, it's really got an impact. And the exciting thing about that is that when I took it to a New York show, um, I got the Salma Gundy Award at the Catherine Laurelard Wolf Art Club, which was not directly related to my entering the Salma Gundy Club later, but it was what got me on the track for more um, enthusiasm in that direction. So I was very pleased with that and it makes a nice uh, framed piece for a dining room situation. It's a formal setting and I enjoy it in my dining room very much. In April we were informed that Artbeat had been selected as one of the five finalists for the magazine series for 1989 by the National Academy of Cable Programming. 167 nominees representing 35 categories were chosen from over a field of a thousand. I traveled to Atlanta, Georgia with Tom Brunt, the editor, and Bill O'Donnell, the cameraman, for the selected programs which we had submitted for judging. Judging was held in two stages. The preliminary judging required that seven minutes be viewed by the judges from each of the 35 magazine series tapes which were submitted. In our final category, the four other nominees were from Texas, Connecticut, Guam, and Colorado. The final judging required that the judges view the entire 30-minute entry tape from each of the nominees. The night of the ACE Awards ceremony, which was hosted by Martin Mall and was run like the Academy Awards, was a thrilling one for all of us. When the entries were read, Scenes from Artbeat flashed on two large screens, and the envelope was handed to the host. Each one of us held our breath. Needless to say, we were delighted to hear that Artbeat had won this coveted award. We're thrilled at winning this, and we want to thank the crew at Suburban Cable and thank the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts for helping to support us with Film 5. We're glad that our dream won an award. We hope that you have enjoyed this show. We thank you for tuning in to Artbeat. I'm Susan Mahalan saying good night. <laughs>